Permissions are obviously important to keeping a system secure. And in an earlier lecture, we looked at the standard permissions on a Unix system that allowed us to control access to a file based on the owner, the uh, group that owns the file, and also what any other user on the system can do. In that lecture, I actually left out one other permission bit, uh, and those uh, specific permissions that are associated with that uh, are, are called SUID, SGID, and what's known as the sticky bit. I'm not going to address the sticky bit in this lecture, but I do want to talk about SUID and SGID because they have some uh, very specific um, relationships to system security. So let's take a look at the command line. So certain programs, such as password, need elevated privileges to run. So you'll notice that my password file is uh, found at uh, slash user slash bin slash password. So if we look at the permissions on that file, if we do an ls uh, dash l of that file, what you're going to notice is a couple things. You're going to notice that the password uh, application is owned by the root user and is also affiliated with a group called root. Obviously, um, that's a little bit strange because I, as a user, if I want to change my password, can go ahead and just execute the password command. And you'll say, okay, well, that makes sense. You know, I'll just hit enter a few times with this you know, control C out of it. So it errors out. And you'll say, well, that makes sense because, you know, it says here that all other users on the system um, have read, write, or sorry, have read and execute permissions um, to this specific um, application. But what you'll notice is that when I change the password, I actually need to change some low level system files. Like I'm actually, when I change my password, the, the new password that's created needs to be written to. Uh, one of the system password files uh, so that it can be stored for future use. And really, the only person who can write to that file is the root user. And so you should have already noticed something that looks a little strange in this uh, set of permissions. And you see the letter S where execute would normally be listed. And what this is called, this is called SUID. And what this does is that this will actually um, call it the set user ID. And this ID is actually, um, or this specific permission is what allows anyone who runs this command to run it as the owner of the file. So in other words, it will, at the time you run the password command, set the user ID of that command to be root. So even though I ran it as the user JSON, when I have this set to um, set UID set, it means that this will actually run as the root user. There's not one set on this file, but there's also a specific permission called SGID for set group ID, which means we could also set this up to run as a specific group ID that might be different than the group that I'm actually affiliated with. And if you look at my uh, groups, I'm actually in a number of groups, but I'm not in the root group. And if I were to, you know, obviously I'm not the root user, uh, I am the JSON user, so I am neither in the root group nor am I the root user. Um, yet, when I run this application, it runs with some elevated privileges as per the root user. So this is what SUID and SGID do. They allow us to get a little bit more finite control over uh, the system, or a little bit more finely grained control over the system. And you know, it's it's one of those instances where you could you know turn this into a pseudo situation where you could do pseudo password but then you know if you did pseudo password that would probably let other people change other people's passwords on the system and that would be bad so in this case what i really want to do is i want people to be able to change their own password without having to intervene as the administrator of the system uh, but i do not want other users to be able to change the passwords for other users on the system uh, and so this allows me to do that so one of the things i can do for set user id um, if I wanted to, in my home directory, I've got a number of files here. Um, I actually have the ability to, let's clear and get this up to the top, these permissions myself. And so what you'll notice is, let's go ahead and say, um, I don't know, let's see if we can do it for this tar file, right? So I've got this um, tar file of the source code for mpg123. So in the past when we changed permissions, we used shamad. And we would say if I wanted to give that permission to everybody, I would just do 777. And if I do another ls-l, oh, do another ls-l on that, you'll now notice that that file has the permissions of read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. One of the things that I've kind of left out when doing Chamad is I've only been using three positions 
uh, for my permissions. I've actually been leaving out a permission that should come at the front. And this is where we indicate that we want to um, set user ID or set group ID. So if I were to do chmod, and let's say I wanted to still do 777, you know, mpg.tar, but I want to set the user ID bit. So just like read, write, and execute are represented by the values uh, 4, 2, and 1. SUID is represented by the number 4. SGID is represented by the number 2. And the sticky bit, which I'm not talking about in this lecture, is represented by 1. So if I wanted to set this to um, global read, write, and execute, and also add this uh, super user ID, or sorry, super set user ID, SUID bit, I would do 4777. And now if we look at that file, let's just look at that file. You'll notice that there's that S again, which says, okay, whenever somebody, you know, and in this case, it doesn't really make much sense, but it might that this tar file would be untarred by somebody. Um, it would be executed or, you know, if this were an executable file, it would be executed with my permissions. Again, this is an executable, so um, this doesn't really matter. And in this case, if I wanted to set the SGID, again, this is just an example to show you how to do this. Um, if I wanted to uh, just set SGID, but not set UID, I could change it to two. And now you'll notice that there is an S in the group segment of the permission. Um, the highlighted version uh, gives me a different color so I can indicate what that is. And if I want to set both of them, uh, just do six. And now if we look at that again, you'll notice that they are both set to RWS, RWS. Um, it's not really a good idea uh, to have those set unless you need to have them set because it's a security hole. So now by setting it back to zero, you'll notice that our permissions are back to normal RWX, RWX. So again, this is a tar file. You really would only use SUID uh, and SGID, uh, usually on executable files. Um, so the idea being that um, these allow people to, or allows you to grant limited elevated privileges to uh, users for specific files on the system. And usually those limited elevated privileges are gonna be affiliated with root privileges. Uh, and it's just, again, one way that gives you a little bit more control without having to add somebody to the sudoers file. One of the more common uses of SGID is that you would take a folder like group folder and I would set the group ID bit on that. So if I go ahead and do a chmod and I'm going to do uh, let's do uh, two seven seven five uh, group folder and then we take a look at the permissions on that folder you know that I've now set the group ID on this folder when you set group ID on a folder what that means is that anyone who adds a file to this folder the group ownership of that file will be switched to the group ownership um, of the folder and that can be really helpful uh, when people are working in uh, groups and they're using a common folder so any about time uh, you create that file you know you get the correct permissions for that file. Because the SUID and SGID um, permissions have some security implementations for the system, it's important that you understand and know what files on your systems have these permissions set. So one of the things that's uh, important, because if you have a file that's SUID and somebody changes that to do something malicious and then it can run, say, with elevated root privileges, that can cause a problem on your system. So one of the things you can do is use the find command to find the files on your system that have the SUID and or SGID bit set. Uh, and the way you can do this is with the find command. And in this case, we'll look for, uh, in fact, we'll look from in the, just in my current folder because I just created that file. Um, any file that has permission of uh, 6,000. So this means any read, write, or execute, but specifically is looking for files with the um, SUID and SGID bit set. And you'll notice that it goes ahead and tells me that group folder, uh, which I just created with SGID permissions, uh, has that set. Notice you can search for just SGID or S um, or S UID. So if I just look for SGID, it'll give me group folder. But if I want to look for just SUID, it gives me nothing. So it's really important as a system administrator that you realize that you should occasionally look for these files. Make sure that you know none of these are accidentally set or that some program doesn't try to uh, set this up maliciously uh, upon installation. So it's important to know what SUID and what SGID do. Uh, why you need to be careful about those permissions on your system and um, how you can use them in your day-to-day -day work to make everybody's life easier.